Doctor Who showrunner says we should all shut up about the gay thing. Mass Effect Andromeda promises to fix the gay romance options as well as the transgender character. And my favorite yaoi manga gets an official English translation? More on this in a second here at Queer Fidanchi. Hi, welcome to Queer Fidanchi, where I share LGBTQ and beyond media through news, reviews, and good conversation. Today is Friday, and that means it's time for the weekly update, where I share LGBTQ and BL media news. This could be anything from casting announcements from Hollywood to new Kickstarter updates for BL games and more. So let's get started. First, for our Queer Quota, and yes, Queer Quota is back again, we're going to be talking about Doctor Who, which, by the way, totally not planned. The whole thing that I talked about last week, which was that the companion for this new series, I'll say series since it's a British show, is actually going to be gay. Uh, Bill Porter is her name. And people last week were all excited, myself included. But apparently the showrunner, Stephen Moffat, does not agree. Apparently he tells them he wants us all to just shut up. He said specifically, the correct response should be, what took you so long? We didn't expect all the fuss, so the fuss stops now. And keep in mind for his next comment that Doctor Who was originally a children's show that, of course, that was back in, what, the 50s or so, maybe an earlier. The generation that watched the show originally have all grown up on it. So the show is now an all-ages all TV show. He says, it's important we don't make a big fuss of this in a children's show that communicates directly with children. You don't want young kids who regard themselves as normal and happen to fancy their own gender. We don't want to make them feel as if they are some kind of special case. So, I don't know. I get what he's saying, and I understand it and agree with that, but at the same time, he's basically telling people to just shut up, right? He even goes on to saying, that's frightening. And journalists, it's not your job to frighten children, it is my job. So he's basically telling journalists, stop making this a big issue. But it is a big issue, you know? LGBT representation is still something that people are still fighting for and still trying to create more of. So when there is more out there, we're happy about it. We want to talk about it. So I don't know. I agree with what he's saying, like let's not sensationalize it when it should just be a normal thing. But at the same time, who are you to tell us to shut up, Stephen Moffat? Who are you to tell us to, to stop talking about it? But speaking of Moffat, luckily this will be his last series as the showrunner for the show. I was never a fan of his as the showrunner. That said, he's given us, as a writer, he's given us multiple good episodes and multiple wonderful episodes, like Silence in the Library in series four? Four? Yeah, Don Noble, four. And then on top of that, Peter Capaldi, who is currently playing the current Doctor Who, he is also leading this series. Lots of people are now assuming that the Bill Porter character will also be leaving as well. Since the Doctor will be gone, since the showrunner will be gone, they'll might as well just start on a new slate with a new showrunner, new Doctor, and a new companion, right? So we don't know what's going to happen with Bill Porter yet. It's not official, but people are saying, you know, yay, she's gay, but she might not stick around. Next, this is a shorter story, the Will and Grace revival. Yes, remember the Will and Grace revival, that's still a thing. And that's actually being a thing that's gonna be extended. That's right, they've extended the revival from 10 episodes to 12. Yes, that's only two episodes more, but at the same time, that's two episodes more. That's two episodes more of Will and Grace, which is pretty great. The show is already in production, they're filming it and everything. The revival will come out later on this year, and now it's gonna stick around for a little bit longer. Next, Three Generations, which is an upcoming film, is getting some problems with this rating. Uh, specifically this film, Three Generations, which is, once again, about three generations, and specifically about Naomi Watts' character, who's trying to go find her ex-husband so that they, he can sign for their child to get a gender reassignment surgery. The film has been given an R rating, and the creator is definitely not okay with this. TWC, the co-chair of the production company, has specifically said that the fact that the R rating would prevent high school high school students from seeing this film would truly be a travesty. So they're trying to fight it, they're getting a lawyer and they're trying to fight that rating. The film is supposed to come out on May 5th, so they don't have a lot of time to do it, but hopefully they can get something done. MPAA, which is the char in charge of rating films, it kind of has a bias against LGBT content, especially if it's from an indie or a smaller studio, a smaller production studio. We'll see if they'll be able to change that, but who knows. Next, we're going to be talking about Mass Effect Andromeda again, I know, but Mass Effect Andromeda just came out with its first big patch since the game released 
what, two, three weeks ago? Back on Tuesday, they made the announcement that they were going to be doing fixes, not just in this first patch, but also some fixes they will be doing for the next two or three months. Specifically, this first patch had just a few minor uh, fixes, things like the, able, the ability to fast travel between planets when you're flying in space. In addition to that, there's stuff like fixes to eyes and some makeup and cosmetic things. Some crewmates have some different clothes when they're in casual uh, time, whatever. But in addition to that, they also said that, you know, in two, three months, they will be fixing some stuff. And specifically, some of the stuff is some more options and variety in the character creator, because thank God for that. The character creator, creator is absolutely terrible in the base game. In addition to that, there's other stuff, such as the improvement of male romance options for Scott Ryder, which means gay romance options will get better. Now that I'm in it more, I can now comment on this. The gill romance option is pretty bland. The character is nice enough, but there's not really anything interesting to his romance with Scott Ryder. Mass Effect 3. Uh, had a very good storyline. Yes, they only had one romance option for a gay uh, shepherd, but that romance option had a very interesting storyline that was romantic and I specifically thought it was dramatic and good. But this one was Gil Brody, bland. <laughs> very bland. In addition to that, there was another character named Reyes, Reyes Vidal, who I've only just met so I can't really comment on that. But a lot of people are like, oh my god, it's fantastic, so I expect to have the wind swept under my wings. We'll see. In addition to that, they might actually put in the whole jaw being bisexual, which was supposed to be in this game, which I talked about a couple weeks ago, the fact that uh, data miners found information saying that Jaw was supposed to be for both uh, Scott, both writers, but they eventually, for some reason, didn't go through with that. Maybe they'll go through with that in a following patch. In addition to that, they said that they were going to fix the Hanley Abrams character, who is the transgender character in the game. She's an NPC who you have a very short conversation with, to the point that I met her and completely didn't even recognize that she was a transgender character. She basically had a storyline saying that she was not being respected for her gender identity, and so she left to go to Andromeda for this big expansive mission so that then she could live out her life as she wanted. And a lot of people were not okay with this. It was very a uh, blasé uh, kind of way of introducing this concept of the character, as well as the whole idea that we are, what, thousands of years ahead and we still have apparently problems with transgender characters in a universe where there are multiple aliens, multiple romances and sexes between those aliens. So good for the squeaky wheels out there saying that Mass Effect Andromeda needed to be fixed because they're going to be doing some fixing. Lastly, for our LGBT media news or for our queer quota, there is going to be a Batgirl movie and there probably is going to be a transgender character in that. The DCEU recently has been coming out with a lot of announcements for m new movies, such as a Nightwing movie and now a Batgirl movie that will be helmed by Joss Whedon. If you guys don't know who Joss Whedon is, he was the showrunner and creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So of course some people are for Joss Whedon and some people are against Joss Whedon being the head of this Batgirl movie. But one thing that we are all looking for, at least us LGBTQ fans or fans of LGBTQ media are looking forward to is that the fact that the in the new 52 Batgirl solo series, which this they've already announced will be the source material for this movie, one of the characters in it is the best friend and roommate of Batgirl, and that is uh, Alicia, who is actually a transgender character. She was this rebellious painter and aspiring chef who then eventually kind of mellowed out, but at the same time got married and was always there as support for Batgirl. So I'm really happy to see that. I hope that she actually shows up in the movie and I hope that she has a prominent role. But that is it for our queer quota. Let's move on to our BL bits. That's right, it's some yaoi time. Uh, specifically, this is an announcement that actually came two months ago, but I didn't notice it until now. So we're gonna talk about it now. Uh, specifically, Sublime Manga, which is one of the two uh, biggest English translating publishing companies of Yaoi Manga. I talk about Jun Manga a lot of the time, but Sublime Manga is the other one. Specifically, they have three comics that are coming out later on in this year. The first one is Am I In Love or Just Hungry by Akane Abe, who I've read a couple of her manga. Uh, she's pretty good. She's pretty good. Um, so she actually has this manga coming out. It'll come out in July 2017. It's a one-shot. The story goes that it's about this sports-minded guy who finds himself attracted to his upperclassman, a member of the food club, even though he is not his type. One day, he catches his upperclassman and an unknown man in a very sexual situation. 
Um, so it's just that one story shot. It'll come out in July 2017, so go check it out. Oh, and it's only for digital. It's only a digital that you can get it. Next we have A Strange and Mystifying Story, which will have all seven volumes, one to seven volumes that'll come out. And it'll be for print and digital, and it's by Suta Suzuki. The story goes that Akio's family is tragically cursed and his bloodline has fallen prey to a mysterious fatal disease. When Akio's own health starts failing, he desperately summons the spirit of a strange protective beast, or is he a ravenous wolfman? In order to survive, Akio must trust his very life to a monster who enjoys nothing more than feasting on poisoned blood with a cold glass of sake, of course. So if you guys want to check out that story, it'll start being released in November of this year, and then each volume will be sporadically released. I'll have the list over here. And lastly, they're going to be translating my favorite yaoi manga ever by one of my few favorite mangaka. Specifically, this is Jackass by Scarlett Perigo. That is Jackass Sawate Lite Dare Ga Ita Yo. Sorry. And otherwise, it's Jackass who said it was okay to touch me. Kisuke, who accidentally goes to school wearing pantyhose because of his messy older sister. Thanks to his friend Masayuki, he is able to change his clothes in the school infirmary, but then Masayuki gets a look at his legs. So, things happen there. I happen to love this story. It's my favorite yaoi manga because it is not just, you know, a little on the kinky side. But in addition to that, it is a lot about LGBT pride and LGBT-ness and about respect of the gay culture, which a lot of yaoi manga just completely forgets about. I happen to love this manga, so I'm definitely going to be checking it out. You can buy it for print and digital uh, in October of this year. Uh, it's only one volume, so it's just one purchase. Go check it out. Lastly, some little bit of uh, Kickstarter news. First, the full service uh, game it has 34 days left. It has $59,500 as of this moment. I'm looking at it right now out of the 20000 that it asked for. So they're like, they have actually maxed out all of their extra bonus rewards. So you're getting things like some extra characters to romance. You're getting things like a uh, free version of the game that is safe for work. It's about an office worker who goes to a spa and ends up getting a massage by whoever you choose and ends up, you can romance any of those characters, right? So if you guys want to check it out, go ahead. If you guys want to back it, you are very much uh, assured that the game will come out uh, and you have 34 days to do it. Lastly, Fujoshi Trapped in the Semi's Perfect Body is getting a volume three. It's on Kickstarter right now. It's pretty self-explanatory by the story, but it's about a high school student who is a Fujoshi and majorly obsessed with gay romance and gay sex. Um, so if you're a Fujoshi and you're looking for a Fujoshi story, go check it out. I have some thoughts for the first volume and I'm waiting for the physical copy of the second volume to get to me so that I can read that and then share my thoughts with you guys. So I will not be backing this until I get that second copy. Uh, right now I'm kind of on the fence on whether I want to back it or not. But the creator of the Yaoi Army, which is the publishing company that's creating all this content, he literally just got into Yaoi like two years ago and now he's already created a kind of empire in a way, a mini empire, but still an empire. So I respect him so much that I'll always be sharing his info about what he's creating uh, with the Yaoi Army. And that is it for this weekly update. If you have any thoughts on any of these properties or any of these stories, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, make sure to like it, share it with your friends, and to subscribe if you haven't already. Queer Fidanzi tried to share LGBTQ and BL media through news, reviews, and good conversation. So let's get talking. Bye. Now if only they could have given that extra money to another project.